Good day everyone, Mr. Cargill here with the next AutoCAD video. Now for this video, we're going to be looking at one of the most important topics in a technical drawing, which is isometric projection. Now isometric projection is a form of pictorial drawing in which you, you would show three different sides of a figure to show the front either the left or the right and also a view from the top all right and this drawing is done at 30 degrees it is used in a wide array of um, drawing disciplines from architects to engineers all right so for this topic we are going to be completing this drawing here in isometric in AutoCAD. All right. So what we're going to learn about is how we go about doing isometric drawings in AutoCAD and also how we go about dimensioning isometric drawings in AutoCAD. OK. All right. I'm going to do a, a separate dimensioning video, but also in this video, I'm going to show you how you go about um, doing the dimensions. All right, so for here, we have two corners that we could start with. Well, we could start anywhere, but we are going to start over here. All right, so it says that this distance is 30. We're going to start with that, okay? All right, so if we come over here now to AutoCAD, as you can see, the grid lines right now, they are just vertical and horizontal because currently we are not in the isometric plane so to get those isometric lines we're going to click here where it says iso draft or isometric drafting and we're going to click that and turn it on now you can see my lines are set at a 30 degree angle so whatever line i draw now if i should draw a line it will be at that angle all right once once i turn on ortho right that line will be at either 30 degrees or 90 degrees Alright. Okay. Alright, no. So we're going to start. And the line that we're going to start with is 30 millimeters. So I'm just going to click a place to start. And I'm going to draw that line 30. So there I have my line. Alright. So what that represents is this point right here 30 then from the 30 we see this goes up by 10 goes across by 10 and goes up by 10 so let's do that all right so from here this goes up by 10 so just click there draw a line up 90 degrees you draw that line by All right. No, I know that for I know that for AutoCAD web, you don't have the option of um using the the iso isometric drafting because iso AutoCAD web is um currently only supports two dimensional drawings, but you can still do isometric drawings in AutoCAD web. It's just that it will be a bit more difficult. Um, but all you have to do is just draw your lines at 30 degrees and 90 degrees. So what you can do is here in polar tracking, you just click the drop down arrow and set your uh, plane to like 30 degrees and you draw your lines at 30 degrees and so on. And you can still do um, isometric drawings in AutoCAD web. All right, so the drawing went up by 10 and then it went across by 10. But if I try to move my cursor across here, it's not giving the option to do so. It's just going either in that direction, that direction, upwards and downwards, but I want it to go across so to get that since i'm going to be drawing a line on the isometric um, top plane what i can do now is to click on this drop down arrow beside isometric draft drafting and go to isoplane top okay so now you can see the grid lines kind of shifted and now i can draw this line there all right and now that can go across and i can draw my line across by 10. 
no other than clicking the drop down arrow here all right i could also do this i could also just um type control f5 and then you can see the grid lines changing all right so control f5 is a shortcut for changing between the um isoplane left isoplane top and isoplane right all right so now i'm going to click there and i'm going to bring this across by 10 and then i think it went up by 10 again yes indeed it went back up by 10 and then across by 30. okay so let's do that so then this goes up by 10 and across by 30. so i have to change you now to the isoplane left or right let's delete this Alright, so let me change to isoplane, right? And then this went up by 10. Alright, then across by 30. Okay, and then up by 20. And then across by how much? Let me see how much. And then at the top here, it went across by 20 again. Okay, let's do that. So over here and then across by 20 that did not register so let me do that again okay there we go all right so now to we get the next side of the drawing which is these lines right here as you can see this goes up by uh by the same 10 this goes across by the same 10 and this goes up by 10 all right then we have this section over here and it says that this comes across by 30 all right so right here this section right here comes across by 30. so if this is 20 if this distance is 20 and this distance here is um is and this distance is 30 that would mean that right here is 10 how do we know that is 10 because this is 20 so for this entire distance to be 30 this has to be 10 because 20 plus 10 would give us 30 okay now if this over here is 30 all right and this is 10 good that means that this distance is 20 okay let me say that again if this is 30 and this is 10 that means that this distance here has to be 20 okay so this is what we're going to do with that information so this goes up by 10 across by 10 up by 10 and then across by 20. so what we can do is this we can just simply copy this by click on that line uh and also this line and that line and i can copy them from here and bring them across to there all right so all I did was copy those lines. Instead of copying, I could have redrawn them, but I didn't have to, because I can just copy them and it works it's the same way. So now I just join them like that, join the points, join there, join here, and join. Now it says this part going back goes back by 20. So that goes back by 20 like that all right so let's see the drawing now okay so we are at this place right here so if this is 30 right and this is 70 this entire distance is 70 and this distance is 30 that means that this distance is 40 because 70 minus 30 gives us 40 all right so this distance here is 40 all right so this goes across by 40 across by 10 and then up by 20. all right so let's do that so from here this goes across so we have to change the isometric plane to isoplane left i think yeah here we go so this goes across by 40 and then up by 20 i think let me recheck yeah up by 20 and across by 20. 
and then across by no it doesn't go it, it goes it goes back by 10 first before it goes up so here you can see yeah it goes back by 10 first and then it goes up by 20. all right so we have to we have to draw that back by 10 first so let me just select this from here and um let me change to isoplane right yeah bring that across by 10 yeah and then up by 20 and across by 20 then we can just join this like that join that like that and join this that. okay so what we did was to get that section there so now we have this section here to get we have over here to get all right it says that the height of this is 40 okay so let's draw that so it goes down by 40 and across by 30 okay so let's do that so this goes down by 40 and across by 30 okay, let me do that again there and then you join it to that point right there all right So that came down by 40 and then went across by 30. No, to get the rest of this here. As you can see in this section here, we know that this is 40, right? Because this is 30 and this is 70. So this distance has to be 40. So we're going to come across by 40 to get this point, then draw this line up to get that intersection and then bring this across to join this point here. And then the join is basically finished. So first we bring this across by 40. Let me just change the isometric plane to left. Okay, so bring that across by 40 and then just join it to that point. Another join this point to that point there. Alright. And that is the isometric join completed. No. We are going to look at how we go about dimensioning the isometric drawing. All right. So in terms of doing isometric drawing, um, what I want you to get from the video is not just how to do this drawing that I'm doing. It's how to. It's just the principle, the principles that apply to doing isometric projection using AutoCAD. All right. Now with that, we are going to go into dimensioning our our work. All right, so here we have the dimension tab here. So I'm going to click on dimension. I'm going to let me change it to a different color. Here. All right, so I'm going to dimension it. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click there. As those are the points that I want to dimension. All right, but no, this is this is not giving me um, what I want. It's saying this is 15 because it's measuring the vertical distance but i wanted to measure that distance at 30 degrees so to get that this is what i'm going to have to do i'm going to have to click um over here on annotation all right let me do this first let me do this first this is the dimension here as you can see it's right it's currently set to linear dimension i don't want the linear dimensions I want the angled dimension because it's well aligned dimension and the reason why I want the aligned dimension is because I want the dimensions to be aligned with the lines at whatever angle I draw the lines and it's isometric drawing so the, work, the, the lines are going to be at 30 degrees so I want my dimensions to be aligned with that so I'm going to set to click on aligned so now this is set to align the dimension so if I click dimension here again just click and then click in this space here and then click over there all right and turn off turn off ortho and once you turn off ortho then you get your dimension all right once you do that you get a dimension now i can choose how much i can choose how much i want this to come out by so let me bring it up by about um 10. let me see if 10 looks too big 10 is good 
So when you click there, you just I just click here, click here, and then I, I bring this out by the amount that I want to bring it by. No, here. This is kind of tilted at an angle. I don't want that. I want it to line up with this perfectly coming like that. So how do I go about doing that? So here, as you can see, this 30, these lines just go all the way down. All right? Like that. All right? These lines just go all the way down like that. So I want my dimensions to look perfect like that. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to type, I'm going to edit my dimension and I'm, and, and I'm going to dim edit my dimension, sorry, by typing dim edit. Okay, I'm going to click on oblique. It says select objects. I'm going to click on this dimension and press enter. Oh, I want my dimension to line up perfectly with this line going down like that. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to click here and I'm going to click there. And just like that, my dimension lines up perfectly. Okay? Now, when you're dimensioning, you might click dimension and, you, and, and then you realize that you're not seeing any numbers. The numbers are there, they're just really small. So, if your numbers are really small, come to annot annotation and then click on ISO 25 here. Click, click again. Uh, let's click on the drop down. Manage dimension styles. And then from here, you're going to go to modify. Now, if your dimensions are too small, all right, what you would do is to simply click on text. We're already on text. So the text size is at 2.5. So that works for me. Yours would probably be set at, I think the default is like 0 0.18 or something like that. So that would be very small. So just adjust the text height. And that will change, change the size of your text. Um, and right now 2.5 works. So you can try 2.5. But if it still looks small, just change the text height to um, a number that allows you to see the, the numbers of the dimensions clearly. Okay. Good. Alright. Once you do that, you will be able to see your text height. So over here for primary units, you, if you don't want any decimals, if you want the decimals, um, just change this from comma to, p, to period, and you get your decimals, and you could set your precision to how many decimal places you want. If you don't want decimals, just click zero. Okay, just click zero, and you don't have any decimal um, places, and click okay. All right, and that's how you will set up your dimension. Okay, so I'm going to do one dimension on this side because for the next video i'm going to do a full dimension uh tutorial but i want to introduce dimension in this video all right so if i click on dimension here if i click here click over here bring that out by 10. you want to ensure that you bring all the dimensions by the same amount so that it looks nice and neat and even all right so then now from there i'm going to do the same thing again i'm going to click dim edit all right dim edit right there i'm going to click on oblique select that click on the dimension and press enter and i'm going to click here and click here okay and that aligns perfectly like that all right so i do hope you found the video helpful this is the first video on isometric projection i am going to do quite a few more videos i'm going to do a dimensioning video and i'm also going to look at how we draw isometric circles we're all, i'm also going to look at how we go about drawing doing drawings that has um isometric circles all right so thank you for watching and do have yourselves a wonderful day